and don't feel pressured to do them. You don't need to do psychedelics, okay? You don't need, everyone wants to do them, but you don't need to do them. Are you kidding me? Everybody, I'm Matt Mosgren and you're on air with Radio Chatter. Joining us on the flight deck today, we've got the dreamiest, steamiest, Vancouver, BC's quarantiniest, Young Heezy. Welcome to the show. Hey, what's up? I'm happy to be here in the sky. <laughs> you probably know Jordan Heaney best as Young Heezy. He's a bedroom pop star whose sophomore album, I Your Boy, has been making waves internationally, while his early hit song, Cause You're My Girl, has accumulated over 13 million streams on Spotify to date. We're here at 10,000 feet over Tantalus Provincial Park near Squamish. Uh, we've got a bit of cloud right now, but it's a beautiful day. So, Jordan, we'll start out with uh, a quick gift here, uh, courtesy of uh, our friends at Kaylin and Hobbs. Apparently, your your pickle stories have really been making the rounds here. Whoa. What have we got here? What is this? Oh, we got a pickle uh, little uh, logo. And a jar of pickles we have from Kaylin and Hobbs. These are uh, jalapeno, the New York taste with the West Coast vibe. Thank you so much to our friends at Kaylin and Hobbs. Thank you so much. I can't wait to, to mow these down. <laughs> so judging by the Instagram, which, uh, I mean, it tends to feature a lot of funny teasers and uh, things about upcoming projects. Um, you've always had a generally positive relationship with uh, surprises. It sounds like your mom kind of cultivated this at a relatively young age. So can you walk us through your 15th birthday surprise party at Tap House? At the tap house? Oh God, who did you talk to about that? Well, you're you're young, easy. We have to know. That's a very Nardwar approach, isn't uh, it? At tap house? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I had a, I had a part fifteen. I had a party with uh, a couple friends. I think it was like it was me, uh, my friend Ken, my friend Mila, my friend Luke, and uh, we just had a dinner. But the the catch was that we uh, we snuck a two six of vodka into our top house dinner. <laughs> and so, you know, we, we ordered a couple of waters and uh, when the guy wasn't looking, we'd just be, you know, pouring them out, getting pretty wasted. What's the legal drinking age in, uh, in BC? It's, uh, it's 19. Oh, okay, and this was your 15th birthday? Yeah, 15th or 16th. Yeah, after a while, uh, we became less and less subtle with our underage drinking. And uh, the waiter came by and saw it and just, you know, he's like, snap, points to the vodka, gets it out of there. <laughs> yeah, we get kicked they out. They knew, they knew. Yeah, yeah. Do you have anything that you'd like to say in retrospect if you randomly met the server now and they recognize you? Uh, I, I would be like, good job. Underage drinking is terrible. So let's talk uh, woofers and pupperinos for a moment, pupperinos. Um, so your mom owns a doggy daycare, yeah. and uh, it sounds like you've had a bit of a rocky relationship with doges over the years. And so can you tell us a little bit more about an experience that you had with dogs shitting and pissing all over your bed? Yeah, I had the, the, we were taking care of this wiener dog that really hated me. And every time it would see me, I, I like I walk into a room and it would immediately <laughs> snarl and then piss and shit itself. And so like I out of it, anger, out of fear? Out of like pure hatred <laughs> of me. And I, so I tried to avoid it as much as I could. I tried to warm up to it, 
and it would fucking bite me. It would bite really hard. So Holy I was like, shit. Where, like, were you just giving it your fingers and then it just yeah, like, yeah. took a little... Okay. With dogs, you know, like, the big dogs are friendly and they're nice. You can wrestle with them. The small dogs are just, they're all, they all have small penis envy or some shit. <laughs> or whatever, <laughs> small penis syndrome. And they just get real mad. Napoleonic real vibes. Right, right. So uh, I just walked into my room one day and this dog is just like chilling on my bed, sees me, <laughs> snarls. You're like, you're like, oh no. I'm like, yeah. And I tried to like get out of its frame of vision before, but <laughs> no, I couldn't. And I'm like, no. And it just pissed and shit <laughs> everywhere. And, oh uh, man. Yeah. I love dogs. I do. You want to fly a little bit yeah sure i'd love to so basically this is what we want to do here in fact let's uh let's make a start a left hand turn over here so you want to look for traffic first so just look over the wing there we go and you can start your turn there yeah so, man you use that foot pedal yep so you want to push in the direction of the turn on the foot pedal and uh, just pull up a little bit to prevent the nose from going down you'll see the vertical speed is really starting to like go oh. down when you turn and you can roll us level and just fly us straight towards that mountain there okay Whoa, holy shit. That's so fucking sick. Yeah, man. So you're the type of musician who can basically pick up any instrument and play it, which is pretty sweet. And so can you tell us a little bit about the jam session that you had with Pretties and the Frog Pile, where you grabbed a penny whistle and cranked out the iconic Celine Dion Titanic theme song? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We had... Um... Uh, I think it was for uh, Canada Day. We had a show coming out, so like we wanted to do, you know, show some Canadian pride. And who's better than Celine? So we decided to try the that queen. one out. Oh God! <laughs> feel is that called? Is that G? Holy shit! This is this is fucked. Yeah, man. So basically, what you're doing right now, you can pull up a little bit, and you'll feel some positive G. Oh God! And then if you push a little bit. Oh my God. Holy shit. Isn't that crazy? Yeah, that's that's wild. Oh! <laughs> it's like a roller coaster. I'm not, I'm, I'm like not even doing anything. Yeah. I'm so not... tempted just to. On the topic of instruments, you've mentioned a number of times that you love orchestral scores. You'd love to do an orchestral score and like full recording uh, in the future. And so, We've uh, started to see you explore horns and all sorts of things that are kind of less conventional. You had like a stately marching band sort of deal in uh, No Revolution for the Chosen Children of 95. And so where did the inspiration to do orchestral music come from? Uh, I, I love that sound. I love violin music and I wanted to create something very grand. And as a kid, I, I would listen to a lot of Mozart and Beethoven and Bach and like, uh, my parents had um, a lot of classical music around the house. So I, I think it's, it's helped to shape the way I, I view melodies and the way um, I hear music uh, a lot of the time is like puzzle pieces, like being stuck together. Uh, I just love it. It just makes me happy. You've also said that you think about how recording or you think about how music is going to translate to like a live performance environment. And so would you ever like to see yourself performing live with an entire orchestra behind you while you play yeah. guitar, like sing? Totally. That's the dream. I want to have like a 24 piece orchestra. I want to write music for that. And uh, that would be absolutely gorgeous to do. That's really that really just should be like the goal of every yeah. musician is to have like a an orchestra behind you because like you kind of get a taste of it when you're in band in high school but you don't really give a shit because you're like this is this is school and this still sucks but like it, it's gorgeous there's nothing else like it you mentioned in the past that you think that you'll always have your hand on the steering wheel when it comes to production and that, uh, yeah, you can always, you can do it in the airplane too. Um, but when you started producing music under Young Heezy, 
uh, you started producing out of necessity and, and didn't really know what you were doing half the time. And so what do your production skills look like now in comparison to when you were recording, say, whenever you're around, I hate everything less? Uh, they're, they're a lot better. I still don't know what I'm doing, but I got like a better idea. And um, it's just practice, you know, it's like weird things like you learn like, oh, this microphone sounds a bit better on my voice because I want my voice to sound a little bit darker right now. And then it's really just, it's like playing an instrument like the, the your console, your uh, your recording equipment is another instrument. And the more you practice it, the more you get used to it, the more like you can do things by feel all the time. Like I, I really don't have to think about it as much anymore. If I want to sound, I can kind of I'm already like coming up with a game plan on what would work best with it. Do you ever find yourself producing now in certain ways that like deliberately retain the bedroom pop sound, even though your production equipment and your techniques might be at a level where like the low five vibes aren't really necessary anymore? Yeah, for sure. I, I still find like uh, places to use lo fi production and um, like intentionally. Yeah, like before it was just because I had real, real shit equipment. And like, um, I recorded everything with uh, an SM57, every instrument. Uh, and so now that I got like a better setup, I can like, I can work it, but I can still go back to that and be like, I think it would be really cool if, um, I don't know, like the guitar was just like really dinky for this part. So it like emphasizes when a really nice guitar comes in and that kind of thing. Your approach towards making mistakes in the music is is also like super refreshing. And so you've discussed in the past that like, hey, if you notice on the final recording, you're like, ah, you made a mistake. So what? It's not actually a mistake. It's cool. It's unique. And you end up finding a way to like it. And so now that you have a record label, is that mentality still the same? Yeah, I love that shit. I love where it's like it's not fully perfect. Like if you get like because you know what? To me, I think I, I have a way of like falling into this hole of like deep perfectionism and I'm like, oh fuck, like I could have played that way better. And I'll strive for that. But as an audience member, like you don't know. And when you listen to a song, your first thing is like, okay, well this was the perfect, exactly how the musician intended it to be. You have no idea if they wanted it to be a different way. It just is what it is. And so like, as soon as I started embracing that and like just getting the core, uh, like the core of the song down before anything else and all the little mistakes they they have like such charm to me now and like um wow yeah you know like uh you can like pump out songs a lot quicker and just like you know add to the add to your library less stuff holding you back yeah it's good i like it So now we're over uh, Garibaldi Lake, which is uh, just unreal. It's just so blue. Uh, let's get a nice view of that. And we got the Black Tusk over to our left-hand side. Yeah. Castle Towers Mountain. Yeah, this is gorgeous. So let's talk uh, songwriting process a bit more. You're always looking for uh, an overarching meaning for every song. And you've said that uh, you always have to be able to justify the lyrics that you write. And so most often it stems from personal experiences. Uh, so you start with a melody and then you start mumbling shit out and you get some rhymes and you try to identify an overarching meaning and kind of steer the direction of the songwriting a little bit. Um, so what sorts of stuff are you doing to experiment with different songwriting uh, approaches or is your framework or method kind of a winning formula that you think you're gonna crank out bangers with till the end of time? I like the one that I have. Uh, which is very like uh, it's very Father John Misty and it's very Beatlesy. Uh, the the way that I am comfortable uh, creating lyrics uh, is where it has some sort of like like every line really has some sort of meaning to me or um, that it follows a story or a theme. Uh, before this, I I tried making lyrics that were very like nonsensical and very abstract and i think that that works for a lot of people uh but i find it more difficult to figure out and a lot of the time i i can't tell if it's a good lyric or not i mean I, lyrics are the the most difficult part for me for sure they take the most time um 
you sometimes will i mean you know like you'll sometimes have a magical day where like and it's this is usually what happens is i'll get writer's block for like a month and then one day i'll i'll have like six songs i'm working on and i just pump out lyrics for each one and uh it's all it's amazing when that happens when you're in like the flow state yeah it's usually after like i haven't i haven't been sleeping very well and it's like 4 a.m and i can't sleep and uh it gets i get into this pattern and i'm just able to like knock them out that's crazy this view is crazy dude holy shit this is absolutely like incredible <laughs> I'm gonna go live. Dude, do it. Hell yeah. yeah, you get service? Yeah, I do. That's awesome. I'm gonna see. And I'm gonna ask you another question. We can yeah, just do yeah, it live. Yeah. I feel like no one's gonna be able to hear us. No, that's fine. This is like sick. <laughs> <laughs> so while your mom inspired your early artistic interests, it sounds like your dad got you into trying a lot of sports. And so you were pretty fit at age 16, and then you went deeper into music, um, and then your athleticism began to take a bit of a back seat. And so can you tell us about the time that you tried to keep up with your old man doing the grouse grind when things took a bit of a turn? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I think I know which one this is about. This is like, um, dude, okay, so my dad is like avidly doing the grouse grind all the time. And it's like, for those who don't know, it's uh, Grouse Mountain has this notoriously difficult trail where it's like straight up stairs the whole time. And um, basically what I did was I did enter this competition with them. You run up it, try to do as quick as you can. And I hadn't done it for a while. So I fucking uh, jumped like, I just did it. I just did it like way too quickly for my skill level at the time. And I got to the top and we're on the gondola going down and I just feel so fucking sick. Oh my that God. I like puke in my shirt. <laughs> and like, it's like a packed to the brim, like sardines. Oh my like, God. How many people gondola. were in it? Oh, it's pro I mean, it's probably like, I don't know, 50 people or whatever. I don't know, but it's like sardined in. So it probably comfortably holds like half that. Um, yeah, I just got puke. <laughs> I had to puke into my fucking shirt to hold it there until we got down. It was it was absolutely disgusting. This whole interview is just about piss and shit and puke <laughs> and pickles. <laughs> so, so it's time for a game called Did You Dabble With It? I've got a few subjects, topics, pastimes here. Some of them have some truth to them and some of them are a complete shot in the dark. I'll say the subject in rapid fire and you tell us yes or no if you did indeed dabble with it. Let's right. get started. Let's fucking do it. PS4. Yes. Scalloped potatoes. No. Wilderness survival water collection methods. No. Moscow mules. No. Awkward shoulder hugs from Alex Turner of the Arctic Monkeys. Yeah. Recreational firearms. Yes. Microbiology. Yes. Just sending it. Yeah, dude. Squamish. Yeah. Squash. Yeah. Mac and cheese. Yeah. Ball trimmers. Well, yeah. Industrial drill presses. No. Expedia.ca. Yeah. Who hasn't? All right, everybody. So it's uh, the moment that you've all been waiting for. It's time for the Instagram fan questions. And so first question is at uh, Los Roaches says, ask Young Heezy his honest opinion on pickles in general. Pickles in general are, they're really good. I heard recently that they can help you with like uh, a stomach ache because they're very acidy and they just cut through. Um, I think they're super solid and they're like, real good for like a keto diet if you're just trying to get fucking jacked and shit so yeah pickles all the way dude fuck cucumbers next up 
uh, at Eat My Dirty Underwear asks, what inspires him most? Elon Musk, dude. At Supreme Mozzarella wants to know why pickle? And that's a singular pickle, by the way. Why pickle? Uh... That's a great answer. Thank you. Um, at Medina underscore Ale says, Bros, can you please ask to Young Heezy about thoughts on psychedelics? Yeah, I think psychedelics are good, but you just have to, you know, be cautious and figure yourself out and don't rely on them and don't do them. You should respect psychedelics. Go into them with respect, figure your shit out, and then decide how much and just be very honest with yourself and how much it's like helping and improving your life. And if you're just having a, a real good time on them or not, and don't feel pressured to do them. You don't need to do psychedelics, okay? You don't need, everyone wants to do them, but you don't need to do them. Are you kidding me? At Lizbitch underscore, hi, can you ask what's his current favorite cartoon? Is there, what's her name? Liz bitch. Haha, <laughs> Liz. Um, I really like SpongeBob. Um, at Ridley is dead is wondering, uh, what do you think your most underrated song is? Um, I think a genuine attempt at not being a dick. And um, that one, yeah, that one, I, I just really like that song off the latest album. And like, I don't know, from like the first album, I think like, uh, I don't know anything. I think like, I just really like my lyrics on that song. At karma underscore payments underscore plan says, can you ask Young Heezy which of his songs is most personal to him? Uh, they're all they're all pretty goddamn personal, dude. Um, maybe uh, social anxiety or because uh, you're my girl. Yeah. At Eric Anderson underscore asks. Um, could you ask Young Heezy what he thinks of Oasis? Oasis fucking sucks, dude. What are you doing? Oasis is just like the greatest Beatles cover band to ever make it. <laughs> Shot fired. Um, at Lilac Butterfly asks, if you weren't making music, what would you be doing? I'd probably be a pilot. This, oh, is, real, this is so fun. This is stupid fun. I, people shouldn't be allowed to do this. It's too fun. Ice with the Spice is wondering, are you selling your pickle art? Uh, I've been thinking about, yeah, like doing an auction or something. By the time this comes out, uh, I probably have sold like some pickle art. So. Well, thanks so much. It's uh, time to head back for landing. So say bye to the fans. Bye-bye. Goodbye. Thanks for flying with us today. All right. See, good, good luck and um, peace. And coronavirus is real. Uh, be good to each other in the streets. Oh! Ladies and gentlemen, this is your captain speaking. You know exactly what to do. Fasten your seatbelts and subscribe for more.